that. So yeah. you you were a believer. Yes. You were a Christian evangelical for like ten years, you said, or for all your entire life. Uh, I was Christian before, and then I became really serious about ten years. You like uh, right in college? You went yeah. like Super Saiyan yeah. around. Yeah, around. I got. Uh, Clayton, I'm going to do a quick little talk. Hey, what's up? So you said, um, so back, fresh, fresh plate. Yeah. You've been an interlocutor before. Yes. Is that the person who does the interviewing? That's correct. Yeah. In a street epistemology kind of conversation. Right, yeah. All right. You mind telling me about that a little bit? Well, um, I, I first learned the the uh, process from the book, the Manual for Creating Atheists. Okay. I always thought the Manual for Creating Atheists was the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as much of a Bible as we can have. Okay. You know, as atheists can have. So, yeah, and, uh, you know, then when I was coming out of religion, um, you know, I was still attached to a lot of the people that I knew from my time there. I was at Evangelical for about 10 years. And okay. So, after that, um, you know, they wanted, really wanted me to stay. They were my, you know, they were my good friends. And, mm. uh, so, we, we went through a couple of books, like The Reason for God, and, uh, just, you know, them trying to preach at me and trying to reconvert me and, you know, rescue me, whatever you want to say. Can I ask yeah. a question about that? So, yeah. you, you were a believer. Yes. You were a Christian evangelical for like 10 years, you said, or for all your entire life? Uh, I was Christian before, and then I became really serious about 10 years. You like uh, Right in college. You went like yeah. Super Saiyan yeah. around? Yeah, I got uh, recruited by a group. Uh, I don't know if that was so rich, but yeah, really evangelical, really intense. You know, really okay, strong. and then yeah. it stopped. Yeah, I, I left. Uh, How did that happen? Um, I was, uh, I really wanted to get to know like the foundations of the Bible, like the historic, historical foundations. And mm. the more I dug on that, um, the, the more I compared it with uh, you know, secular um, archaeology, secular history. It just didn't dive, you know, these places that they talked about in the Bible didn't exist, mm -hmm. you know, or they didn't exist at the time of the chronology. So. And that made you less willing to believe in the dogma um, that you currently yeah, have. Exactly. But what made you, like, say... Okay, well, I'm an atheist. Yeah, well, then I read a book. You know, you know I wanted to sort of test myself. You know, sure. I, like, I wanted to understand why people left. You know, people. You know, I don't remember exactly what, what tipped me off, but um, I read this book by a guy who was very similar to me. He, was, uh, he worked in IT and programming. And he worked for uh, a group called Wycliffe, which does Bible translations. They do okay. a lot of technical people. And so he was in Africa, and he lost his faith or gave up his faith um, while he was over there. And, you know, and I, he was on a, a path very similar to mine, so mm -hmm. it really hit me, you know, when, you know, this guy's saying these things, you know, it's like, look at the Bible, look at its foundations, and, you know, within a matter of days, I was deconverted. You know. Deconverted, do you think you have a more reasonable position right now with your non-belief in the Christian God? I think it is more reasonable, okay. because at least it jives with reality, um, you know, if you, if you can line up all the gods and all the beliefs that there are, you know, all of them have, some, have to be grounded in reality or history or, you know, if you hold them lightly, I say if you're a Pastafarian, you know, you know that's about <laughs> enough, you know, as far as I can go, you know. Okay, okay, joke, okay. You know, sure. So, you know, so no, I, oh, I, I, I do know a guy who takes that religion very seriously. Sure. Only yeah. for the driver's license picture aspects, because, yes. like, who wouldn't want to wear... you can take it as seriously as you want. Right? Sure, so, sure, sure. I do wonder, there are people who deconvert from one religion and just discover that another religion is correct. Right. You haven't had the chance to look at other religions? Oh, I've looked at, uh, when I was an evangelical, I had a chance to look at all these different religions. We did a lot of comparative religion uh, mm -hmm. just to prove that our own point was correct, right? Okay. You know, you can't be correct unless you you have an answer, right? You have an answer for the, the hope that you have in uh -huh. Jesus. And so, you know, did a lot of good work, you know, on being an atheist plus one God. Yes, right, right, so, um, right. Yeah. So, you're, so you said you did most of the legwork of discounting other religions right. while you're an evangelical, yes. so all that was left is so just this, discounting the evangelical right. position. Right, so once you've done that, then that's very, you know, you don't have a belief in a God left. And, you know, I always felt that I was a, I was a pretty scientific mind. Um, you know, I didn't really believe in all that woo and getting, you know, even some of the more supernatural parts, you, you know, you're like, well, people just take it at face value. There's got to be some kind of scientific process. Let me throw something at Yeah. You said you're an atheist. Right. How do you define that for you? Uh, someone who believes in no gods. Someone who believes in, someone who lacks belief in any god. Right. Yeah. You, do you believe that there's no god? Um, I'm as close as you can be with the, uh, you know, with the basis, you know, the philosophical basis of being able to disbelieve or disprove God, you can't disprove God. It's not falsifiable. It's yeah. So it's just one of those it's things. Not a, it's not something that you know. It's like disproving unicorn. 
Yeah. But your yeah. com- your I'm, your I'm, confidence is extremely low, but I, not absolute. I would die, you know, <laughs> if someone, you know, to, if I had to believe in a god, I think I'd, I'd die for the belief not to. Yeah. I mean, there are, okay, so I, I'm in the same position too. I also have a position where I'm not absolute about my knowledge of whether or not there is or is not a god, but I don't have any conviction to believe in one until I'm presented with enough reasonable evidence. But if I had to pick a god, like if I had my choice, there's some good, there are some cool gods. You got four. <laughs> I'm always really big. MCU style. I'm just like, that guy's actually trying to save people's lives. Well, yeah. you don't like Marvel? No. Well, I'm, I just think it's kind of we'll, we'll, it's fantasy, and you know, it's like I, I didn't grow up with it, and so okay. Yeah. So right. Star Trek is my Star yeah, Trek yeah, is your yeah. deal. Start. Yeah. We got a guy turned his head as soon as he said yeah. Star Trek back. Right. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, how did you learn about street epistemology? Um, reading reading the book uh, Manual for Creating Atheists by Peter Bogosian. Right. Yeah. And what made you actually start doing it? Like, what was the circumstances that actually made you say, "Okay, I'm going to try this out myself"? Yeah. Now. It, was, it was being confronted with these. Irrational beliefs of my friends, you know, who were, you know, in my own, I, I kind of tried to use it on myself a little bit uh-huh. to understand, like, well, am I really, you know, I, I was fairly certain, but I was, you know, you have that nagging, well, what if, you know, what if I'm really crazy or, you know, that's a mental health thing, but, um, Uncertainty. you know, trying to, you know, just convince, you know, come to some convincing or relief from myself, you know, that what I now believe was correct. So, mm. you know, so I kind of, you know, ask myself, well, well why, why, what, what, what's the support you have for this, uh, you know, new belief that you have? Mm-hmm. You know, being able to go through, you know, the convert of religion, uh, looking at the the historical basis of Christianity, and, you know, I, and then I, I, I use a lot of those things I was learning when I my conversations, probably not as formally, sure, as street epistemology teaches, but mm. you know, it's, you know, I was able to use it to. Um, ask the right sorts of questions about their, you know, the foundations of their beliefs. How does someone, I'm always interested in this because I'm still learning how to do the process myself, yeah. what do you say are some important things that someone should keep in mind when asking questions in an essay style format? Right. Um, I think the, it, it's been a while, but, um, you know, if somebody comes up with something that's patently false, you know, in your minds, you know, okay. you, you, you kind of have to um, be dispassionate. You know, it's very easy to go back and say, well, you know, why, why would you believe that? You, you get know? that knee-jerk you know, reaction. Right. And, and you have to be smarter than that. You have to say, well, how did, how did you come to that belief? And mm-hmm. how, did, how did you, you know, what, what, um, what might you be, uh, what belief might you be holding that, you know, you're emotionally attached to, you know, rather than factually? Sure. You know, so... Um, and maybe not direct, that directly, but sure. uh, more of, uh, you know, it, it's a process of arriving where you can ask that question in good faith. I found it's like a balance between empathy and not getting so emotionally invested in the question that I've started to pick a side right. at the same time, too. Because they might be right, even if I think they're wrong, but like finding that, that, that really sensitive middle ground where it's like, I'm still a human being, I'm still trying to figure this out, I'm really skeptical, but I want to ask a fair question each step of the way. Right. That's that seems to be like the really hard point. Yeah. Being fairly skeptical, you know, like I, I, fairly I, skeptical, like fairly, you know, where we can be, we can call ourselves skeptics, but still have our blind spots where we're exactly you know, less skeptical about you know, like I'm less skeptical about the scientific method because it's well, it's simple, but you know, it has its faults. Yes, it does. You know, and we have to be honest and you know forthright about that. You know, where yeah, you know, the kinds of knowledge that it can produce, the, the ways that it corrects itself. Yes, you know, it's important to communicate. And, um, when it comes to talking about the processes of religion, um, I think it we have to be yeah we have to be especially sensitive to um, the emotional and the personal content. Um, yeah, because these people are, are ready to you know, give up everything. I mean, I was ready to give up everything to be a missionary, right? Wow. I've been in college for you know, four years and just ready to you know, go off and go to seminary and you know, do all these things, you know, in the name of the belief. Yeah. You know, what, what kind of belief is that? Is it, you know, is it your core narrative, you know, really? So. Do you feel... When I started Street Epistemology, I felt like there was a wall between me and my friends or any my colleagues, workmates, anyone who had a really deeply held belief, but I didn't feel like I could talk about that or express how I felt about that. Do you still feel like that's there, or 
I do you understand what I'm talking about? So that social saying, barrier between oh like, that person's Christian. Dang right, it, that's in a, your immediate circle. That's an obstacle like, we're gonna like have to either close, deal with if we want to get a close relationship. Like your with close each other. friends. This is what we're talking about. Yeah. So um, yeah, I mean, I had that. I, I felt that immediate distance, sure, with the uh, you know these people who you know had been my friends and we had been really in sync with each other, and then boom, you know, I'm the one who's you know trying to you know challenge them and. Yeah, challenging people that you know you really call your friends is yeah. you know it, um, unless it, you can't really be 100 percent dispassionate about it. Like mm. I said, it's it's very difficult to. That's why I had to end a lot of relationships you know, that I had because they were they were unwilling to discuss these things on the parents. Okay. So, um, it's, you know, so I left. You know, if I you mind me left. asking, like, okay. like some of, what were some of like the relationships that like, okay, fell apart because of this? Uh, my my closest friends. You know, okay. I mean. And, in the evangelical churches, you had these uh, small groups and sure. people that you. I mean, I've been a part of this church for seven years, so yeah, these are my closest friends. You know, that I'm, I'm having to tell, and although I can't really, I can't really be with you because you know, we we shared a lot and we shared you know a lot of uh, common ground on the basis of religion. But once that's gone, it's mm. like. I don't even really like you, you know, because <laughs> you're so, uh, you're, you know, you're, you're obstinate or you're, you know, you had no uh, idea how close minded they were. Right. Well, I knew, so, I knew what they were. I knew what I was. Sure. Know? And, um, you know, I knew what, what they were, their objective, you know, was to reconvert me and to re to convert everybody they could. Okay. You know, not just, all of them are very effective at it. But, just throwing this out. If we were yeah. to flip the table to yeah. one of your close friends mm -hmm. said, hey, I don't have a good reason to believe this anymore. Yeah. I don't think we can hang out if this is the main activity that we do 24-7. Right. Do you think there would have been anything you as a believer that you could have said or now that you're on this side, something that you wish someone had told you to get you back on board? Like, what are you, what yeah. would get you back? Like, if, I, it all, if, it, if there was that small yeah. chance that you're wrong, like, what is it that you need to just say... I just needed someone to tell me that. Now I get it. This makes sense. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't know if there's, you know, anything. But you know, if you're saying if, like, if there was something that they could have said to me that would have, you know, brought me back. Is there a case? Is there? Like, uh, I mean, at that point, if you're willing, you know, it, it took, you know, so I, I deconverted my mind, and then it took a few weeks to figure out how to tell these people, you know, just how how we were going to handle it, and you know, so I, I, I don't know if past that point in my mind if mm. there's anything they could have said to you know really can I throw something out yeah. this may not necessarily be true let me know correct yeah. me but you, when you say I deconverted it sounds like you took a step down in your mind when uh, really what you did was increase your standard of evidence and just some things that it needed and some things did yeah absolutely and as a result if they can make a case that just meets your standard of evidence that you have mm. you'd be more inclined to at least be like Oh, okay. At least now I'll check it out again. I'll, I'll go through the process yeah, again. And that's kind of why I entertained them for, uh, you know, this book, uh, The Reason for God. It goes through a lot of, you know, scientific sounding off arguments for, oh, you know. Science. And so uh, on the other fact, you know, one of the blogs I read went through a, a line by line dissection of it. And, you know, at about the same time we were reading it. Yeah. So, you know, that was a, you know, I was able to, you know, turn it back on them and say, you know, well, this is, you know, yeah, this would have convinced me a, a month ago, but now, this, listen to this, you know. Sure, everything yeah. This brings up, so. It wasn't just yeah. like one step, like you, you were, you uh, were building gradually your standard. It was increasing even like yeah. after the point where it's like, oh. Yeah, I, my confidence in it, yeah, was growing, certainly. Is there anything that you feel like you believe very strongly right now to an absolute degree of certainty? Hmm. Where you know you can't be wrong about? Doesn't even have to be about God. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. I'm, I'm still trying to figure a lot of philosophical things out. You know, there's, you know, even what you value. You know, I, th I think there are values that are inviolable. You know, like you know, freedom, um, uh, tolerance, um, inclusion, knowledge. Mm -hmm. Knowledge for its own sake is a is a virtue. You know, okay. I don't I don't know that those things I could really be persuaded not to believe in. To 100 percent certainty as a, yeah. a core value. Right. Yeah. This is a little bit off topic. Yeah. This is off topic, and I don't know if we have. Yeah, we have yeah. some time. We got some time. <laughs> yeah. How do you feel? And I, I rarely get a chance to bring this up, so I apologize if it's like still kind of crude. But how do you sure. feel about selfishness as a core mm -hmm. value? Yeah, I don't. I don't think selfishness works really well. Why not? Um, 
well, the world is much bigger than us, right? It is. And, uh, you know, I've heard, I've heard some arguments in, in favor of it. Um, you know, some people who are atheists especially, you know, they want to value it as a, you know, in the idea that if we value ourselves, then we have the resource to um, value others, mm -hmm. you know, and to build a better society for everybody. But And just so I wait sure we're talking about the same thing, when I say selfish, I mean doing things that are in my self-interest. Well, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know if that's... I mean, when I hear selfish, I'm thinking of, you know, more possessed and, you know, more uh, concerned about myself. Yes. Yeah, at all costs. At yeah, all at costs? The highest, yeah. Yeah, at, the, at the highest level, it's myself that I want to I'm follow. fine with that as well yeah. as a definition. Yeah. So, would you say, like, in my opinion, just to, like, flesh this out, I could steal that cup if I like that cup. It says Vanderbilt. I'm a George Tech <laughs> yellow jacket, but you can yeah. keep that. <laughs> but still, if I wanted that, yeah. I can keep it because... If I needed to drink something, I can just take that. But it wouldn't be in my long-term self-interest to take something from you because it, it makes everyone else right, see me in that way. And then yeah. my stuff to be stolen too, and like I don't want to have to deal with that. So selfishness-wise, it's in my best interest not to steal your stuff. Okay. So, Do you see what I'm saying? I kind of said, yeah. This, it's in my self-interest long-term to pay my taxes, to be a good person in society, drive the speed limit, go to work, be a good member of society, contribute. All these things are beneficial to me. Right. better than being harmful to society, being more sick than healthy. Like my self-preservation, if I hold that to a high standard and everyone else does the same thing too, we generally move towards what I consider a more ideal society compared to someone who doesn't care about their self-interest. What do you think about that? Yeah, it's like, if it, I mean, if, yeah, if, you, if you're unconcerned whether you yeah, make, it, make a contribution to society or if you, you know, are... You know, modeling good values to society, then sure. You're yeah, like it benefits me to be in the society where I'm exhibiting good behaviors traits, where other people can mimic. Right, versus like a, an ascetic or a, you know a hermit. Yeah, you know, like that doesn't to, benefit me at all. Right, it, you're, you're, you're you're a net taker. I yeah. Guess, you know? <laughs> um, and you know, if you, I mean, if you, as long if you don't participate in society, you have no, you don't have a say. Right? Yeah, so, like you had mentioned, yeah. freedom. Yeah, you like have, knowledge. It benefits me to have freedom. It's my core foundation is selfishness on that like the reason why I want freedom is because I want freedom and I want everyone else to have it because I want it too sure. I want knowledge that's a that benefits me I would say selfishness from the list that you gave me it seems like selfishness is a bit more foundational but what do you think yeah I could be wrong let me know um, I, I, I wonder where the space in that for um, you know sacrifice and yeah I don't know if sacrifice is the right word but um, uh, you know, delaying the self for the benefit of the whole. Could you right? give me an example where sacrifice is done and not and in a completely right. altruistic manner? Right, uh, parenting. I, I would say you know is a, is a form of sacrifice where we you know or delay our self gratification, our self actualization for the benefit of you know, others. You know, even if they're. Closer. Can you give me an example? Right, I, I was thinking like the, the parenting relationship. You know, if you're you know, in like what kind of dynamic? I mean, I'm not a parent, so like, you know, <laughs> neither am I. I'm a cat dad. I got an awesome cat. <laughs> right, so, you know, just the, you know, you set, you're sacrificing some of your interests, your, your hobbies, your, you know, for potential education, you know, mm. like, I, I think about my mother, she, you know, sacrificed a lot, you mm. know, to raise us, you know, or, you know, having to work more, mm. having to, you know, less time, less time to be selfish, you know, in a way, you know. Less time to be selfish. Yeah, less time to look after her for some you know. Can I throw something out? Yeah. This might be twisting what you had said, so okay. let me know if it's fair. Yeah. But if I choose to be a parent, knowing very well that there are laws if I don't take care of my kid well, that they can have repercussions on me, it's in my self-interest to, if I choose to have a child, take care of that kid. Also, long-term, a loving relationship with a child is better than a distant, you know, disastrous one full of dysfunction. So even though I'm, even though I'm taking away some time, to invest in my child, it's for the betterment of like a long-term relationship with this kid that will have many reaping for me personally, emotionally, maybe even financially, uh, support-wise, security-wise. Yeah. These are like really good, like I might be putting a dollar from my wallet into someone else, but it's building capital and dividends long-term, and that's ultimately a benefit to me. Right, it comes back. If yeah. there was no benefit to me whatsoever, if literally having a kid was just, hey, you're losing all this time, you're losing all yeah. this money, Feels I may not sad. even be a parent. Yeah. And yeah. if I was, I may not even be a good parent. Yeah. Couldn't we say then that there's some idea, I wouldn't say it's entirely altruistic, 
being a parent. Is there a place if you're a good parent. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But you could say foster parenting. You know, you know, let's maybe twist it that way. You know, there's no immediate reward or, or even long term. Oh, that's you know, good. I like this. We'll think about that. You know, you're, you're not completely in control of the situation there. You know, like a, a family who, I mean, they took care of this baby for you know, 18 months and then it went back to her mother. So, oh, know, that's that good. Devastating. So, you know, is it worth it to do all that? Uh, We'd have to it? ask a foster parent yeah. to know that, but I'd yeah. love to get that information. Until then, I don't know. Hey, that's that is a great point. And that's a great point. Like, okay, I won't take up more of your time. Sure. Thank I you. really appreciate yeah. this talk. Yeah. Thank you, man. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for holding me set yeah, this up. Sure, yeah.